Hey everybody, welcome back to Touchy Reactions. Sabaton fans, we got another good one for you today. We did a poll over on Patreon for a whole bunch of options for different Sabaton reactions. And uh, this week we're going to be doing the Corollian's Prayer. I think that's how you pronounce it. Corollian? Uh, this is off of the uh, Carolus Rex album. And uh, I know they did an English version and a Swedish version. So, so tonight we're going to be watching four videos. The first one we're going to be watching is the lyric video in English. Then we're going to watch the Sabaton history. Then I'll watch the lyric video in Swedish. And then we're going to be watching a live video. That's about all I could find. I, I did a deep dive trying to find everything I could online other than some fan-made videos. That's, those are the four top ones that I could find for this song. So that's the plan for tonight. Appreciate you all stopping by. Everybody who's been liking the videos, commenting, voting over on Patreon, joining the Patreon. Thank you, everybody, for supporting my channel. I've been growing. It's been a blast. And uh, I'm glad you guys came along for the ride. Let's go ahead and jump into this first video. This is the Corollian's Prayer lyric video in English. And here we go. So first verse and chorus, uh, soldiers marching off into battle, their faith in God, that God's going to protect them. There was a verse in there about their orders are coming from God. I don't know about all that. Y'all know I'm an atheist over here on Touchy Reaction, so uh, their orders are coming from somebody. Uh, maybe there's a God, and uh, you know, I, haven't, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard about it yet. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the uh, chorus. The chorus is good. The verse was average. Nothing blew me away on the verse, other than it told a good story about what's going on. Uh, and I'm guessing as this next verse kicks in, we're going to just continue with the story about what's going on. And guessing that this entire Corollus Rex album was about the Swedish army fighting during the Thirty Years' War or different periods of the Thirty Years' War. So I'm guessing uh, that's the perspective we're coming to with regards to this song. So that's that's where I'm starting from right now. I might be completely wrong. Discipline unites them A common faith to keep them strong
I really like the heavy guitars here in the chorus. It's very nice. Warfare was so different back then than it is now. Everybody just line up. We're going to fire and take turns and no cover. Just crazy. <laughs> A little Lord's Prayer there in the middle. Nice. I like that section right there. That was very nice. Well written. Something about the sound of harmonizing guitars, electric guitars, it's just always pleasant to hear it's it's metal it's rock it's, it's amazing <laughs> I bet you for the religious folks in the crowd, this song right there at those parts right there where they're saying the Lord's Prayer just hits them really hard. They really feel swelling inside, all that, the spirit. All right. Shout out to Pescator. This was another uh, great lyric video by Pescator. They always do great work over there. Uh, yeah, a lot of soldiers, man. They uh, they use their faith as the rock that helps them get up every day and go into battle. If you're convinced that God's on your side and uh, he's going to protect you during war. It helps you uh, keep your head straight and, and fight hard, knowing that, uh, A, you, th you know, you think you're doing what God wants you to do and you're forgiven for any, you know, Killing that you do, he's going to protect you. He's going to keep you safe, and uh, you know it's a very powerful tool. Religion sometimes when it's 
to motivate people to do things. All right. Next, we'll be jumping into the Sabaton history. This is uh, episode nine. Wow, this was early on in the Sabaton history library. We've got uh, Joachim from Sabaton and Indy Nidell. This is Soldiers of the Swedish Kings, Sabaton history number nine. And here we go. I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Joachim from Sabaton. And this is Sabaton history. The soldiers of the Swedish kings, the Carolians, were the elite soldiers of Europe in their day, winning great battles, even outnumbered with their innovative and superior tactics. But their discipline, morale, and religious convictions were equally important. And that's what our song Carolian's Prayer is about. Now, Joachim is going to tell you a little bit about the song in a minute, but first, I'm going to tell you the history. In the 17th century, most European armies consisted of three types of soldiers. The levies, who were usually conscripted or otherwise locally raised men. The mercenaries, who were often experienced but expensive soldiers for hire. And guards units, who were the elite household units of the state, high in talent, small in numbers. The Swedish Carolian soldiers were something in between. After the rather disappointing performance of the Swedish military in the Scanian War, which ended in 1679, in which they fought against Danish, Norwegian, and German armies, who they had thought to be their inferior, King Carl XI began reorganizing and modernizing the Swedish army in the 1680s. He developed a new allotment system where each Swedish province had to raise and equip a standing force of around a thousand men in both war and peace times. Those men were professional soldiers who, in return for being given their uniforms, weapons, and plots of land to support their families, had a lifelong commitment to king and country until they were released from service, or they died, whichever came first. Sweden, or the Swedish Empire, or just the Kingdom of Sweden, had never been able to maintain a standing army for long because of a lack of manpower and resources. Even at the height of its power, Sweden could not compete with other more populous European powers in terms of numbers and replenishment. So instead of quantity, they had to rely on quality. The Carolians, as they were now called after their king, enjoyed the best training and quality of equipment the empire could provide. This emphasized modern flint. They're wearing just some long shorts and then his legs are like naked up to his crotch area. What is going on with this outfit? Maybe that's just some, uh, maybe he's got some stockings on or something. I don't know. It looks weird. It looks like he's wearing shorts with knee high socks. Weird. best training and quality of equipment the empire could provide this emphasized modern flintlock muskets and strict drills in marching and firing performed with live ammunition special emphasis was put on close combat training with rapiers bayonets and pikes now bayonets were actually a rather new thing so most of the musketeers were trained in fencing with rapiers since the carolians were now professional soldiers they began to develop a certain feeling of uniqueness within Swedish society. The community was paying for their living, and in return, they were expected to fight and to die for the crown. But it went beyond that. Officers and veterans defined themselves as krigare, meaning warrior, and associated the word with a sense of pride and duty and merit. It wasn't just about the oath to the king or the regiment, nor the time they spent training, nor even their competence in leadership. That's a great piece of art right there. The true test of the warrior was his baptism of fire during a real battle. Scars from wounds were, were shown proudly since they symbolized the blood shed for their king. And at the end of a Carolian's life, the scars they bore were the only proof of the hardships they had endured on the battlefield. And of course, their comrades who were also present at the battles experienced the same pain, fear, glory, anger, and joy and society would never really understand it in the same way. Now, this feeling was true more or less for every soldier everywhere, but the Carolians dealt with it in a different way. They had a certain camaraderie 
that was absent in the larger European armies, which was great for morale. But besides the strong camaraderie, they held strongly and even fatalistically to the Christian faith. Chaplains were common in European armies, but for the Carolians, they were omnipresent. In the way battles were fought at the time, with lines of tightly packed soldiers marching towards and then shooting at each other, it was difficult to explain why one soldier died and the man next to him lived. The strong faith of the Carolians convinced them that every death on the battlefield was simply according to God's will. Death did not come to them because they failed or made a poor decision or simply because of bad luck, but because death was already predetermined before the battle. God had already decided it, so worrying about whether you would survive a battle was pointless. All this did not make the Carolians completely fearless or some sort of religious warrior fanatics, but it was a way of dealing with the stress of battle. And this strong Christian belief, in combination with the strict discipline of the drills, made the Carolians highly motivated soldiers. If you take a look at how the Carolians actually fought, you understand why a certain fatalism was necessary. As I said before, the Swedish forces had to rely on quality over quantity. This had to really translate on the battlefield itself. Long engagements with high casualties were unacceptable, and Sweden could not fight wars of attrition. Instead, they had to defeat their enemies quickly and decisively. Regular battle combat was fought in line formations, where soldiers closed ranks to maximize the amount of firepower they could unleash on the enemy, so both sides would, as I said, march their infantry towards the other, and then stop and open fire at a distance of around 100 meters. They would then reload and continue to fire. Artillery and cavalry were used to disrupt and break these infantry formations and exploit breakthroughs. But that could lead to long and costly engagements, the sort the Swedes were trying to avoid. So they had to beat this whole system. The Carolian musketeers would set up four ranks deep as they marched toward the enemy. But instead of halting to fire at the usual 100 meter mark, they continued marching. The enemy, of course, would not and opened fire upon them, but the Carolians marched on. Muskets were notoriously inaccurate, but many men still fell from enemy fire. Despite the shock and despite the casualties, they marched on until they were around 50 meters away from the enemy. The saying, do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes, did not come from this practice, but it might as well have. The volley of gunfire from the first two ranks at such close range. Wow, this is a great piece of art right here, too. I love this style. Very cool. I don't even know what you call this style. Look at the uh, depth. How it fades in from the back with just lines that then turn into muskets. Wow, that is a cool drawing. Very cool was far more accurate and far more effective than the enemies, both physically and psychologically. But after the first two ranks had fired, they still did not stop or reload, but kept on marching. Instead of reloading, those first two ranks drew their rapiers and changed positions with the third and fourth ranks. Then they closed in on the enemy to around 20 meters, and now those ranks opened fire as well. At this close range, most bullets would easily find their targets and completely disrupt the enemy's ranks. And the Carolians kept on coming. They did not stop to reload, but charged with cold steel, bayonets and sabers raised into the enemy. Modern military historians support the thesis that although all armies had begun slowly equipping their soldiers with some sort of bayonet or bayonet-like weapon, actual charges were thought of as a thing of the past by most military thinkers at the time. Thus, the Carolians, specially trained in close combat, crashed into disrupted, unstable, and frightened formations. The tactic was simply called Guapo, which translates to walk on or march on. 
all it was was swiftly marching through the enemy's fire to close with him. It was a very dangerous tactic and relied decisively and exclusively on personal bravery and aggressiveness. But done correctly, it could absolutely terrify the enemy and lead to a swift victory with minimal casualties. When you think about it, it arguably made the Caroleans the first modern shock troops. Breakthroughs would then be exploited by Carolean cavalry, who, in the same spirit as the infantry, rode very close, often knee to knee, to maximize their effect on smashing the enemy's formations. In many ways, the Caroleans were unique, and actually pulling off said Gorpor tactic was only possible through the strict discipline, the high morale, and the unique motivation of the Swedish soldiers at the time. The Great Northern War of 1700 to 1721 showcased the effectiveness of such tactics in battle after battle against numerically superior foes. But we'll talk more about this in the other episodes about the other songs from Sabaton's Carolus Rex album, a concept album about this period in Swedish history. Suffice it to say for now that as long as the Swedish army could avoid mistakes on an operational level, it was extremely tough to beat on a tactical level, and doing so would, in any case, require a huge loss of life from those foolish enough to try. Now, the actual writing process for this song was a bit different from how you write most of the other Sabaton songs, yeah? Yes, uh, normally we do the music first and the lyrics comes later since there's a lot of research to do for us usually. Fair enough. Uh, in this case, however, already uh, as I was writing uh, the song, the words Tills han vita ögat ser, Karolinen marscherar fram, which is basically almost what we sing in the lyrics. And it's, uh, see the white in their eyes, Carolines are marching on. But I, I like that you said it in Swedish because this song you can get in Swedish and in English. Yes. You have it in both. Now, why, why did you do that? Uh, well, we've had requests over the years that we should maybe do something in Swedish at some point, And we thought, yeah, but it didn't make sense for us to sing in Swedish if it wasn't about Swedish about history. World War II. Yeah, yeah. You know, Swedish people are decent in English at least. And no matter how good we think we are, it's still a second language. Yeah, sure. Writing the lyrics for this album was so much easier in Swedish. And also singing. You know, when you're singing, it's not only about hitting the notes, but also getting the vibe and the feel in there. A lot of people miss that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's bizarre that I needed less than half of the retakes that I normally do when I was singing in Swedish. <laughs> But now this song, this has, uh, it has that, the choir, right? Yes. Okay. And it's uh, one of my favorite moments, uh, actually, of recording ever. I don't know, for those of you who record music, sometimes things just turn out as good or better than you could even dare to hope. And this was one of those moments. And I'm standing there listening to the choirs being made as I'm singing Till som vita ögat ser, Karolinen marschera fram. Lost it leave a good hand for sin corning of Fusterland, put their lives in God's hand for the kingdom and fatherland. And when I hear those words in Swedish with the choir and I'm singing it at the same time, I had to stop the takes because <laughs> I was almost shaking, you know, and I got goosebumps already. Wow. About, you know? How many layers of, of chorus and choir were there? Uh, well, it's triple harmony. Usually we record male choirs. So it's like three to five guys who go in and sing. The bottom harmony, the middle, and the top harmony. And the top harmony is usually where I'm singing as well, or joining in. And then we do the same for female choirs. So it's quite a lot of takes, because we usually dub them as well. So we get them in stereo, so we go left and right. Well, that's cool. And let's hear some of that. Well, that was fascinating. Thank you very much, Joachim. Uh, Carolian's Prayer is on Carolus Rex. And that's it for today. But we will see you next time right here on Sabaton History. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Remember to subscribe to Sabaton History, the regular Sabaton channel, but also remember to check out Time Ghost and World War II. If you want to see more videos like this, here's a playlist. Cool stuff, you want to see it. 
And also, there's a chance for you to get a special edition of our upcoming album, The Great War, if you go and join us on Patreon. So do that, and do that now! Bye-bye! Yes, as always, support Sabaton History on Patreon. we got to get these histories cranked out. I don't know where... Man, this new album, I have been waiting to react to this new album that's been out for like five months now, and uh, I haven't been able to listen to it because the histories aren't out, and I'm trying to hear it for the first time when I do my reactions and try and do deep dives. Uh, used to be Sabaton History would release a new video every week, but now it's like uh, we go three months at a time with, with nothing coming out. So... Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to see them in uh, October, on October 3rd. So uh, if I'm going to have to do the quick math and figure out there's going to be a fail-safe time when I'm just going to have to skip over the histories and just do the reactions to the lyric videos and maybe a live performance here or there. I don't know. Hopefully they'll crank up some histories for at least the ones they're on tour with right now. So that's that. I forgot to mention on the front end, there was somebody who requested this way back when named Melkor. Melkor requested this uh, Corollian's Prayer reaction. So shout out to you, Melkor. All right, next we're going to be checking out the Swedish version of this song, the lyric video for that. There are no official Sabaton lyric videos yet for these, so I had to borrow these other ones from the intranet. Go ahead and jump into this Swedish version of the Corollian's Prayer by Sabaton. Here we go. Before this starts, I'm, I'm actually real curious to see how close the lyrics line up to the English version we just watched. Uh, see if it's just a direct translation. I know there's been other Sabaton songs in the past where it's been a completely different song when you translate it. Uh, what was the one I just did? In Lifstidi Krieg, the English version and the Swedish version were completely different as far as what they were. So I'm just curious if this will be the same way. Here we go. So very similar. This is not like in Lichty de Krieg. Uh, this one feels like it's more of a direct translation with a little bit of a, you know, obviously for rhyming schemes and whatnot, you're going to have to change it a little bit. But this uh, this seems like the same song, just with, in, in a different language. That's, that's fine.
I'm starting to understand what Joachim was talking about when he said that uh, writing it in Swedish was easier. Um, it seems like these verses are flowing, the cadences for these verses are flowing a lot smoother, the rhyming schemes are uh, flowing smoother. So I, I feel like they wrote this song in Swedish first and then translated it to English and did their best to make it all line up. But this one is very tight, very good. This drum beat too almost sounds like a marching cadence. It's like it's it's you can almost feel the soldiers marching into battle with this the way the drum beat is set up. It's it's like a marching song. I think if I were at a Sabaton concert and they were doing this part right here with the Lord's Prayer, even though I'm an atheist, I would still be singing this part. Uh, you know, good music is good music. And uh, I think I'd be singing along with this without a without an issue. Yeah, that chorus sounds great. Uh, I've been part of choirs in the past, and it's fun to sing with groups of people when everybody's singing different parts, harmonizing, sounding good. It put, gives goosebumps on your arms to just be part of good music and love to hear choruses, especially when they mix heavy metal into chorus and choirs uh, blend together so well. Very cool, very cool. All right, last but not least, we're going to check out a live performance of this song, Carolian's Prayer. Carolian's Prayer. Carolian's are marching on. Uh, this might be the live performance we saw there on the history. Not sure, but uh, excited to get into it. This is the only real live I could find of this, so they must not have done this too often. 
So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the awesomeness of a live Sabaton performance. Here we go. Free Tommy. Uh, what is that guy's name? I think I remember. Ah, uh, it'll come to me. I don't remember. <laughs> Is it go better to England or something like that? I might be in the ballpark. That doesn't look like Hannes back there either. Yeah, I don't think this guy's Hannes. I think this might have been the drummer before Hannes. I don't know. Love Joachim's energy, man. He's always bringing it. He never phones it in. That guitar solo was way better live than it was on both the lyric videos we watched. I actually want to go back and watch it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. Yeah! 
Sometimes I crack up when I look at Joachim's costume. And I say costume because he wears the same thing all the time. The white and gray camouflage pants, the vest, the sunglasses, the haircut the certain way. It is a He wears the exact same outfit every time he performs. And uh, I can see how that's a good thing in some ways. I mean, it makes it easy for deciding what am I going to wear on stage tonight. Same thing I wore last night. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same clothes, obviously. It's just, uh, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it's almost like Kiss. You know what I mean? Kiss has a look. They all wear their look, and they perform every night, and it's it's what the crowd expects. A lot of rock bands just, you know, they'll wear a T-shirt and jeans or, I don't know, just Joachim has his look. It's his look. It belongs to him, and that's why there's action figures and Legos and all that stuff that are exactly right because... He has his look. It'd be weird if he was just out there in a rock t-shirt, like had a Led Zeppelin shirt on or something. I don't know. Nice. All right, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. This was a fun one for me. I've been uh, putting this one off and putting this one off, but the patrons finally voted it up to where it needs to be to be reacted to, and uh, now we've done it. That was uh, the Carolians prayer. The Carolians. Carolians. Uh, the Car Carolians prayer. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, I enjoyed it. This is actually one of my better. This is one of the better Sabaton songs that I've heard lately. And uh, you know, I know I've trashed a couple of them in the past for older songs, but this is an older song that I actually like. I like it a lot. But we will put this on the house playlist right after I hit stop recording on this video. Shout out again to Melkor for, react, uh, for requesting this song. And shout out to all the patrons who voted on Patreon that pushed this one up to the top of the list. Good job, you guys. You picked a good one here. All right, that's all I got for this reaction. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button down below. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps the channel out. It makes me feel good when people like my videos. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that big red button down below. I got a ton of Sabaton stuff on this channel that I've done already. I want to say I'm close to 60 reaction videos for Sabaton. I've got a playlist, so if you're new to the channel and this is your first Sabaton reaction, there's a good chance I've done songs that you you may want to see a reaction to already on my on my channel. So go over there and check that out. Uh, if you're the type of person that likes to support channels on Patreon, there's a link up in the corner. There's one down in the description below. Got a bunch of Sabaton fans on my Patreon. They're the ones who drive all my content for what I'm doing each month. I'll be putting up polls every month saying, hey, what do y'all want me to do next month? And uh, fans will push the content. So that's where we're at. Anyway, this is, this one went a little long, so uh, we'll wrap it up right now. Hey, we appreciate you stopping by, and don't forget to come on back.